Good afternoon and welcome to episode 67 of Apex Instant Tips, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton and I'm excited to once again have a special guest on the show. You may uh, recognize this guest. We've had him on the show uh, a couple times before, but we're always uh, happy to welcome him back. Welcome, Hayden. Yes, thank you. It uh, turns out I never get tired of being referred to as a special guest. Uh. <laughs> so, Hayden, we missed you last week. Um, I'm sure you were um, very busy uh, watching the show. I very much enjoyed the show. Uh, Mishka is a classic host. Yes, indeed. indeed. Um, well, um, today's tip is actually inspired by a conversation you and I had uh, after a few weeks ago. Um, do you remember what the conversation was? I do. And, and in fact, I know that we've uh, teased to our Twitter audience that uh, today's tip is going to be about building one report to rule them all. Yes. Um, so so, uh, so the, the setup is, uh, and I'll put this as a challenge to you, Anton, uh -huh. I want to uh, expose hundreds and uh, hundreds of tables and views to my user in my Apex application. Right. Well, we've got five minutes. Let's uh, share my screen and I'll kick off the timer and we'll talk about how we would do that. <clears throat> So the first thing um, I'm going to say is you're going to go to, you're going to give everybody access to SQL Workshop. You can see that this schema has uh, hundreds of tables. I mean, it's this, I've had this, this workspace for 20 years. Um, right. So that would, in fact, satisfy my requirement. However, uh, SQL Workshop is too powerful. I, I don't feel comfortable giving them access to that much ability to not only see the data, but also perform DDL changes and stuff like that. Oh, so now we've got a now we've got a real challenge. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna go ahead and create um, a couple hundred pages, a report per page. Crank that out, and, and maybe in a week or so, you'll have all those built. Hard pass. Hard pass. All right. Well, how about this? How about we have one classic report and a, a list of tables, and the classic report simply morphs to um, to look as you want it to for every for every table. Just like that. Now, you can, now you can, we're talking. I, I knew if I kept fishing you, Anton, you would finally give me what I wanted. This is perfect. Right. Okay. So that's it. You, you just want, that's how I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is fantastic. How, how did you achieve this measure? <laughs> so that's the trick. Well, what, um, what I need is I need a way to get a SQL query the way the Apex Classic Report expects it to be. And, and so what I've done is I've just defined a format of it. All of my SQL queries, regardless of what table I have, look like this. They're VC1, VC2, VC3, up through VC20. And then they're N1, N2, N3, up through N20, and then D through D20. So I, I can have up to 60 columns, 20 dates, 20 um, VARCAR 2s, and so forth. Um, so what I have is this package, and it's got get query. Get query, you pass in the table name, and it returns the query that, it, that is in that format. Um, mm. And so I used that query in my, um, in my page. And so let's take a quick look at it. All my, my report is, is it's a function body returning SQL query and it returns that query. And right. as I showed, I'm showing the query here. It always, the query, query to Apex always has the same column aliases and 60 of them. Yeah, so it, it just translates the query into a new format. The next thing that's critical here is to get the right column headers. And there's this little used um, heading type PL SQL function body. And all you have to do is return a colon separated list of headings. So I have another thing here. I pass in get headers, the, the table name, and it returns this colon separated list. So now, now, I get that, is, now that is very powerful. Super cool, right? And that's, that's how I get the heading names. Now, the last part is I use a function that says whether or not I should show the column. And it's the, the table name and the column number. It returns a Boolean. And then for each and every column, it's a little bit tedious. But you go in and you set your condition on there. And you say whether or not you want to show it. So perhaps uh, after the timer is up, I'll ask you how you did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's tedious. And there is a, a little bit of a trick on how you might, might want to do that. Um, but, but there so, you go. Now you have it. Brilliant. And, and uh, however, I'm going to throw another um, a wrench at you in the final two minutes. Uh, I, it, it's not enough to give expose the data to the users. Um, if it's a lot of data, it, it, just seeing the data isn't very useful if you're not able to query it, if you're not able to put predicates and group bys and oh, essentially interact. Now you're talking, you want to do this like an interactive report. Exactly. 
right. Well, here we go. Interactive report. Boom. Same deal. So this surprises me because the uh, the ability to dynamically set custom headings is a feature unique to the classwork report. So um, I don't know how you did this with an interactive report. Let me show you something really cool. Look at this. It got the heading names right. And when I go here and I go columns, it gets the columns here correctly. Everything's the right. Yeah. So yeah, right. that that sounds like um, uh, black magic to me. So how, how did you achieve this? <laughs> so you're right. In, if I go to one report and I take a look at the attributes on this, there is it doesn't have that way to turn return your column headings. So what I did was I created 60 items on the page that I never show. They're in this region that's never shown. Yep. So these 60 items. And then I have another thing called set IR column headers. What I do is that loops through and it uses apex session state right here to set the column header into session state for each of those items. And then it, um, and then for each one of those columns, like I did for the condition, in addition to the condition, which I showed before down here, the column header is the, the name P2 new one, two, three, and so forth. Um, and then I have a dynamic action and my dynamic action simply um, calls that to set the headers whenever I change the table name. So that's brilliant. Wow. And we are, we are out of time, but th there, there are now two things um, that we have for the audience. Uh, one is a feature request in which we're going to ask the Apex team to extend the functionality of the interactive report and interactive grid to match that as a classic report so you can set um, uh, your custom headings dynamically because it is, as we demonstrated, a very powerful feature that could avoid some tedium. And yeah, then, then two, true. of course, Anton, is um, uh, you have uh, very generously offered to share the code behind all of this. I do. I've put this, the entire application, including the, the package that I have that, that does all these queries, all that's on my, uh, my, Git lab, my GitHub uh, location. It's in the rando, and it, this whole app is f1reports.sql. Brilliant. Um, so so um, it, 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 it's, uh, okay, so Neelish has a column, a table with 600 columns. <laughs> He's going to be busy. Um. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what user, it's not a reasonable requirement. Like, you can't see 600 columns in a single report. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and um, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't, um, the, the point of this isn't to do uh, every table, every column, but to give a good example of how you can make use of these things. Um, yeah. I'm going to say I have a few more topics on this and if people have questions um but if you really came in for just five minutes we actually managed to do all that in five minutes and you'll get you can have all the source code by going to uh the link that i showed but i think the more interesting part of course is is how it works um yeah anyway check out now do all the things you're supposed to do if you want um but if not stick around and i have a wisdom of the week and then we'll we can um join in a few other things and we have an off topic tip as well that's right. Big, big day. Big day. Um, all right. So this week's wisdom of the week is uh, get your ducks in a row. Um, you know, I'm not a super paranoid kind of person, but uh, I, I would say um, make sure that your, your servers are secure. Um, you make sure that, uh, you know, your firewalls are up and running. Uh, and from a personal perspective, gas up your car and, uh, Take screenshots of your financial uh, accounts and that kind of thing. Because I got to tell you, I, I like I said, I'm not a I'm not a real um, too much of a worrier. But I think the the way things are going, that's my I feel you, Yeah, yeah. No, that that sounds like very wise advice, Anton. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Th there is a uh, there's something in the air. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. It's, you know, maybe could throw a couple extra gallons of water in the fridge too. I don't know. Um, so, um, so that's my wisdom of the week. But returning to, to this topic, uh, there were a couple of things that um, were, were interesting. Um, and one of the things I didn't get to show, Hayden, was the query that I used to, um, to get the, the, the columns, the 30 columns and all that kind of thing was pretty complicated query. So if people um, do download this app and they look at this package, I uh, made use of a SQL, mac uh, SQL macro. Um, I'm not oh, sure yes. what that link is, but
but um, but it's the link to the the GitLab, uh, the GitHub. Uh, that that's the one. That's the right um, Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I get I make use of a SQL macro, which I was pretty pleased with. Um, I have been itching to make use of SQL macros myself, but it's a twenty one C feature, and I haven't had the opportunity to use it yet. Yeah, yeah, and so I will. I will apologize. Um, this is an Apex app in Apex version twenty one point two, and it's a twenty one C SQL macro is used in there. But of course, where I have the SQL macro, you could just copy that and paste it into the um, into the co the code. Um, but I wanted to make use of a, a few features like that. Um, yeah, no, the uh, the promise of SQL macros is uh, big. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you had another question about um, oh, yes. So off topic tip. <laughs> or, 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 uh, let's let's uh, delay the off topic tip ju just a um, a minute because uh, uh, I, you um, I, I think have a clever method for um, making tedious changes to your Apex pages, and I, I was hoping you could share it. I will share it. Uh, it is. Uh, a little controversial perhaps, but when I have these kinds of repetitive things that require a lot of clicking around the page to do something over and over and over and over again, what I tend to do is I export the page, I open, uh, okay, maybe it's 19C, Plumman says. Interesting. Um, uh, I, I export the page, I open up the export in an editor, and then I just go make the changes in the editor. Um, so in this case, where I have um, colon, I have ampersand p1 underscore new underscore one. I would have copied that into every item, exported, or what I did was I copied that into every item, exported the page, and then in the page export, you can use whatever tools you want to rapidly go through and change that to um, underscore one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, up through sixty. Re-import the page. Boom. You've got uh, all the changes made. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. And uh, perhaps you could further make use of um, as, uh, th any of the VS Code's um, automations for yes. uh, multi-line cursor edits and stuff like that. So exactly right, exactly yeah. right. Um, uh, and and um, what I'll say about that: if you're going to do that, I recommend that you export the page, make a copy of your export, because if you goof it up and you import it and you realize your page is just all broken, you're going to want to be able to import that original one as well. But um, again, you didn't, you didn't hear it here. <laughs> yeah, follow, follow that advice at your own risk. <laughs> That's right, Neil is, uh, is um, going really old school. <laughs> um, so Hayden, um, I understand we have, uh, in addition, an off topic tip today. Yes, so I'm going to share my screen. Great. Um, I'll fill this with some witty banter. Um, if only okay. I had some witty banter at the moment. <laughs> and uh, am I am I sharing my screen? Uh, I don't see it as available. I don't see your screen as um, shared. Uh, well, how about I just describe um, my off sure. because it seems like my um, browser is not allowing me. And I'd have to like shut right, down, start over shut down start but essentially like, have you, have you had the experience Anton of um, uh, you complain about something and then the act of complaining about it uh, gives you the impetus to actually fix it. Uh, I complained about my inability to easily uppercase and lowercase uh, content and SQL developer. And wow. I saw Rich tweet about it and um, uh, Rich Soul, of course, hmm. uh, and so I finally got around to adding th that um, uh, keyboard shortcut. So th the, it, it's very simple to do. You just go to SQL developer preferences, uh, mm -hmm. you search shortcut, um, and uh, in the shortcut um, list of actions that are uh, in, in the command category that is made available to you, th there are two commands. One is lowercase and one is uppercase. By default, they are missing shortcuts. You just add the shortcut uh, on my keyboard. I wasn't currently, I'm not, I, I, I chose option key, uh, option shift um, U for uppercase, option shift L for lowercase. And now I'm set, I, I, at least within the scope of um, SQL developer, I can no longer complain about my inability to easily upper and lowercase. 
Yeah, I um, I saw that same Twitter thread and I love that. I mean, I, I you know, I'm a lowercase person. Our coding standards are essentially make it lowercase if you can. That's yep. basically our standards and I, and I like that. Um, so uh, the, 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 the searching the properties for shortcuts is the key, the key there within SQL developer. Um, so um, now I'll tell me there's a function that lowercase is everything, but the string is like some text. Yeah. Yes. That, that would be the dream. Yeah. Yeah. If someone has the answer, I would be grateful for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm right with you there, Plum. And I've, uh, I've run into the same thing. Um, and you know, you do it, you do it a little willy nilly and you figure it out the hard way, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you start yeah. running your code and things don't work. Um, so, um, well, all that said, uh, I look, oh, you know what? There was one more thing I wanted to say. And if people are interested, there is e an even more compelling use case for what we just showed today. Um, and I'm going to describe that use case. And if people put in the comments that they want to see that as a tip, um, we'll do it. But is it the pivot? It is the pivot. Um, I had a client that had a table with, you know, 30 columns, but then they, they had a detail table with name value pairs. And depending on the type of the primary row, those name value pairs might change. Um, and, and so they, they wanted to do a pivot and show it into a single report, but I don't even know what those name value pairs might be. And of course, if, to write a pivot, you have to know them in advance. Right. So I did the same kind of thing. I just name all the pivots when they're supposed to be named. And then I replace the column headers. And it's, it's analogous to what I'm doing here, but it, it takes, your, it takes your, your flex fields, right? Your flex fields that are stored in a detail table and it puts, puts them in a row. Um, so we, we did that for a client. Um, I don't know that I love that from a data modeling perspective, um, but it certainly, um, it certainly can work. So. Well, I love it, not least because I think it's rather difficult to write pivot queries. So if you have a solution for writing pivot queries for me, I mean, I'm yeah. all for it. So yeah, yeah, it, it absolutely um, does it. Um, uh, oh, uh, I think Plumman is saying that in VS Code, there already is an automation for lower and uppercasing to the exclusion of things quoted. Oh, nice. I actually didn't know that. So, I um, didn't know it either. Um, I, um, yeah. I will well, it sounds like we've got lots of uh, lots of tips today, um, but I think people have wasted a perfectly good ooh eighteen minutes. We're we're pushing we're pushing the envelope today. Um, yeah. So uh, um, thank you for joining us. Um, don't forget to do all the things you're supposed to do. Send letters to your mom. Call all your friends. Tell them about the show. Um, and hopefully we'll talk to you next week. See you guys. Bye.